Uh, this morning, in Don's early subdued light, I thought I'd take a look at Inman Square as it's the only time of day where it isn't absolutely reprehensible. Good morning. This is Hampshire Street, and Inman Square isn't very big, it's really kind of a funny little triangle on the edge of Somerville. This old dump across the street once housed Juliana Hatfield, a briefly notable alternative rock singer in the early 90s with a band called the Blake Babies. You can see it's mainly an assortment of daytime office businesses and restaurants. Here we have the utterly hideous SNS with its overpriced. 12 buck omelets. It's the world's worst deli and it has a huge fat footprint on the neighborhood with huge delivery trucks, big ridiculous buses full of idiots buying box lunches from their trips to Bruins games. It's just obnoxious across the board and is the dominant player in this crappy little neighborhood. This lousy pizza and pasta place is wildly popular for weekend breakfasts. And this crappy jazz dump is owned by the same idiots who own the SNS. And it has dance nights on weekends that result in loud screeching drunks spilling into the quiet night at about 2.30 in the morning. Last night it was El Echo. Usually the hapless musicians that perform downstairs end up getting sonically pummeled by the thump-a-thump -thump dance night nonsense upstairs. Because after all, it's about guys trying to get laid and <laughs> whatnot. This old fire station is undergoing some kind of construction repair. And I've noticed that one consequence of that is a significant reduction in the amount of noise. You see, Hampshire Street is an important arterial for emergency response vehicles, those boxy ambulance things which come from some hospitals down the street this way. This is Cambridge Street and it eventually goes to Harvard a couple of miles down that way. And Inman Square is readily defined by the little park with the statue of Mayor Vellucci, long since gone. Oh, there's old Vellucci. <laughs> Cambridge has a weird 
system of governance called Plan E. It's some relic of the progressive era. And essentially, the mayor is elected from amongst the seven city councilors. They do the voting after the public votes for them in various confusing proportions. So for years, three people would vote for Sullivan, three would vote for Ed Crane, and Volucci would vote for himself. And it became this sort of cat and mouse game where eventually Volucci would decide which of the two he would toss his lot in with, and that lucky person would get to be the mayor. Usually those city councilors were just lapdogs for either Harvard or MIT, I forget which, but that was how it went. And according to my deceased father, who had a lot of business in Inman Square, he was a slumlord in the 60s, Volucci had some relative in the traffic signal business and thus another element of his legacy is the absolute wonderful overload of stoplights and traffic signals wherever you look in this city as you can see there are quite a few right here up there we have another one of Cambridge's never-ending social realism murals this one seemingly blending firemen from all eras, going back to colonial times. Cambridge Street in this great crossing eventually goes down to East Cambridge. And Hampshire Street goes down to the techno-narcissist extravagance of modern Kendall Square. And then here, Hampshire Street only exists for about another hundred feet, and then it morphs into Beacon Street, Somerville. And Rosie's is an old legacy business from the days when this was a hopping lesbian neighborhood in the late 70s through the 90s. Eventually with gentrification and the fact that women generally earn less money than men in America, <coughs> they ended up having to move. It's all yuppies now, other than the tiny handful of people who have lived there for here forever, like my neighbor Marty. So there you have a good part of this little ridiculous neighborhood. This building right here with the abstract fish thing was once the location of legal seafood.